Hey, this is Professor Perez from Saddleback College. Today, we're going to do a lecture on the properties of multiplication. And of course, we can't get started without our student of the semester, and that's Charlie. He better be ready to go. Hey, Charlie. What? Been working on your timetables? Yeah. Okay, we'll see. Anyway, let's get going. There's our first problem right there. Okay, Charlie. What's 8 times 7? Uh-huh. Well, let me help you out here. What's 8 times 5? 40. Okay. What's 8 times 6? 48. That's right. Now, what's 8 times 7? 56. 56. Very nice there, Charlie. That's right. Okay. Well, let's look at some properties of multiplication here. What's 3 times 4, Charlie? 12. That's right. That's 12. You should know that. Now, look at this next problem, Charlie. 4 times 3. Now, what property says 3 times 4 is the same as 4 times 3? The commutative property. Very nice there, Charlie. <laughs> and 4 times 3 is 12. That is true. Now, that is the commutative property for multiplication, which states that A times B is equal to what, Charlie? B times A. Very nice there. Okay, now, let's look at this problem over here. 2 times 3 times 5. Now, we're going to work this problem left to right. Notice everything is being multiplied together. Order of operations, that lecture is coming up very soon. So, and that'll talk about, you know, which do you do first? Multiplication, division, parentheses, exponents, addition, subtraction. We'll get to that very soon. But anyway, let's get through this lecture first. Okay, Charlie, we're going to work left to right. What's 2 times 3? 6. That's right, 6. Bring down your 5. What's 6 times 5, Charlie? 30. 30. Very nice there. Now, watch this. In this uh, attempt, we're going to do the... 3 times 5 first. What's 3 times 5, Charlie? 15. 15, that's right. Bring down your 2. And what's 2 times 15, Charlie? 30. 30, yeah, you better know that one. That's right. Well, notice here, both answers are the, equal to 30. They're the same. And notice, in the first one, we did 2 times 3. In the second one, we did 3 times 5. This demonstrates the associative property for multiplication. Oh, what fun! Anyway, what is the associative property for multiplication telling us, Charlie? It's telling us that, hey, if you have a times b in parentheses times c, which means you multiply a times b first, it will be the same as multiplying the b times c first, and then multiplying by the a. And the problem we did up there, that demonstrates the associative property. Well, you might be thinking, hey, when am I ever going to use this in real life? Yeah. Well, probably on the next exam, for sure. Anyway, let's go on here. Now watch what happens. So I pay attention. We're going to learn some more Kung Fu math. Cool. That's right. Okay. We have 2 times 3 times 4. What's 2 times 3, Charlie? 6. Six times 4 is 24. We simply work left to right. Now watch this. Instead of, I have 2 times 3 times 4, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch the 2 and 3 by the commutative property. And instead of 2 times 3, I'm going to put the first 2 as 3 times 2, and then multiply, right? Because I can do that. It's a commutative property. Now, 3 times 2 is 6. 6 times 4 is 24. And there you go. Now, the 2 and the 4, I'm going to switch that order. Notice I now have 3 times 4 times 2. All I did was apply the commutative property to that 2 times 4 and made it 4 times 2. And then I'll work left to right. 3 times 4 is 12, times 2 is 24. So what I am demonstrating here is that, hey, if everything is being multiplied, you can multiply in any order you want. Okay? Only if everything's being multiplied together. Remember? Don't forget that. Okay. So watch. We're going to try some Kung Fu here. Instead of working left to right, hey, 2 times 3 times 5, they're all being multiplied. I'm going to multiply 2 times 5 first because that gives me what, Charlie? 10. That's right, 10. And what's 10 times 3, Charlie? 30. That's 30. Remember, 10 times 3 is the same as 3 times 10. What property is that? Commutative property. That's right. Commutative property for multiplication. Okay. Now, let's step it up a bit. Okay, Charlie, pay attention to that one over there. We have 2 times 3 times 4 times 3. Okay, Charlie, do this problem working left to right. 2 times 3 is 6. six. Uh -huh. All right, Charlie, time's up. Anyway, we're going to bust out some Kung Fu on this. Watch this. Everything is being multiplied. So we're going to go 2 times 4 is what, Charlie? 8. 8. That's right. And what's 3 times 3? 
Nine, nine. Eight times nine, some people know right away what that is, or you, some people think of the commutative property for multiplication and realize eight times nine is the same as nine times eight. And Charlie, what's nine times eight? 72. 72, very nice there. That is just too good. What? Anyway, let's go on again. Let's do another problem right here. Two times three times four times five. Now don't get scared, okay? Just relax, use the force. Okay, here we go, Charlie, watch this. Charlie, which two numbers do you want to multiply first? Three times four. Okay, three times four, sure, which is what? 12. 12, and that leaves us with what, Charlie? Two times five. Two times five, very nice, and which gives you 10. And what's 12 times 10, Charlie? 120. 120, there you go, c'est carbo. Anyway, the answer is 120, and we just busted out some kung fu on that one. Okay, well, I know a lot of you are probably saying, these problems are easy, that's not gonna happen in real life. Yeah, we'll see, on my exams it will, and that's real. Anyway, here we go to this next problem here. Six times three times two times four times seven. Here's an attitude adjustment problem for him. All right, Charlie, which one do you wanna do first? Six times two. Okay, we'll do the six times two, which is? 12. 12, okay. What's next, Charlie? Three times four? Three times four, which is? 12. 12. And what do we have left over? Seven. A seven, that's right. So notice here, we have a 12 times 12 times seven. Now, Charlie, if you know your times tables, what's 12 times 12? 144. That's right, 144. <laughs> Very nice there. And we have 144 times seven. Now, how do we do 144 times seven? Well, there's a few different ways of doing it. We're gonna do it three different ways, watch. Well, <clears throat> first of all, we realize 144 times seven by the commutative property is the same as what, Charlie? Seven times 144. Seven times 144. <clears throat> okay, now we're gonna go back to one of the earliest lectures in this pre-algebra series, which is something that had to do with something called expanded form of a number. Now watch this, Charlie. We have seven times 144, and we're gonna write 144 in expanded form, 100 times 40, Plus four. What we're trying to do here is we're trying to learn in our mind, we're trying to learn mental math on how to do seven times 144. Watch. Now what we're gonna apply is the distributive property, Charlie, watch. Seven times 100 is what? 700. 700. We go to our next one. What's seven times 40, Charlie? 280? 280, that's right, because seven times four is 28, so seven times 40 is 280 a 28 and a zero. And at the end, Charlie, what's seven times four? 28. 28. Now see, all we have to do is mentally add 700 plus 280 plus 28. But we can still write some of these numbers in expanded form, watch. <clears throat> 700, now how do I write 280 in expanded form, Charlie? 200 plus 80. 200 plus 80, and how about 28? 20 plus 80. 20 plus 80, that's right, okay. And now watch this, Charlie. What's 80 plus 20? 100. 100. So, 700s plus 200s plus another 100 gives you how many hundreds, Charlie? 10 hundreds. That's right, 10 hundreds, which is actually 1,000. Okay, so we have 1,000, and don't forget, we still gotta add the eight, and there's our answer, 1,000 of eight, and eight. So, you might be saying, hey, I'm not gonna write out all those steps. Well, that's fine. You're still gonna have to add those numbers in these vertical formats, watch. So here we go, Charlie, 144 times seven. What's seven times four? 28. 28, that's right. Next one, seven times four? 28. 28, but that's 28 tens, so we put the placeholder to give us the 280, and seven times one is seven, it's seven hundreds, because that one is in the hundreds, and so there you go. You're gonna have to add 28 plus 280 plus 700, and when you add them up, you're gonna end up with 1,008, watch. First column, eight. Two and eight is 10, we're gonna carry your one. Seven and two is nine, plus one is 10. 10 oh eight, okay. Now, we can use the other vertical format with carryover, watch this. Seven times four is 28, eight, carry your two. Seven times four is 28, 30, carry your three. Seven times one is seven, three is 10, there's your answer. Whew. Anyway, we're done, that was fast at the end there, but you should be up to par with your multiplication. Anyway. We'll see you all again soon.